So Mudasar, thank you so much for being here today. I know you were at the Open Forum two years ago. Mm -hmm. At that time, you were part of a panel, and you were a part of a panel where Uber was there as well. So I think we would first want to ask, did Open play a role in this? <laughs> or? So uh, thank you, uh, Farhan. And Open has played a much larger role in Kareem than just that event, as I mentioned in the panel just now. You know, it has created a lot of inspiration. It has created a guidance and mentorship network that has benefited everyone, including myself. So Kareem and, and myself would not be here without Open. Now, that panel was interesting. And uh, as you can imagine, there have been discussions for some time. So um, it was actually interesting to meet that counterpart at that uh, panel as well. But the way this thing basically panned out was we started our last fundraising effort in Feb of last year. And as part of that process, we pinged all the strategic investors that we could line up in the US and China and elsewhere. And at that point, there was a discussion where whether it makes sense to join forces and realize the next wave of opportunity together. So it was in the context of a fundraising, Open had a role to play in it. And uh, we're quite excited for the chapter two of Kareem. Thank you. Um, so now I know Uber was always, Uber was a rival um, mm -hmm. in not many markets where you operate. Um, so how, what, how is that cultural shift or that shift being taken within the firm where now you're becoming a part of Uber? Um, is there a change in um, direction um, as far as um, your strategy is concerned, your markets is concerned, um, or are you going to maintain uh, the separate entity that Kareem has always yeah. maintained? So one of the salient aspects of the, of the deal is that Kareem will get to remain fully independent. It will be a wholly owned subsidiary of Uber. It will have its own board. I will sit on the board along with my co-founder. There'll be three representatives from Uber. We'll keep the Kareem brand, we'll keep the Kareem technology, we'll keep our culture, we'll keep our purpose, and we will still compete in the markets that we compete in. Okay, awesome. And I do know that um, Uber has a lot many other lines of businesses like Uber Eats, mm -hmm. and uh, some things uh, which uh, are not fully developed in some of the markets where you operate. Yeah. Are those areas that you might be looking at and maybe for future growth, uh, from a future growth prospect? So look, I think our view is that uh, the opportunity in a place like the Middle East is a lot broader than an opportunity in a place like the US. So the opportunity in the Middle East is to become the consumer internet platform of the Middle East. Now, the different aspects of the opportunity overlap with some things that Uber has, whether it is Uber Eats or Uber Freight or Uber Bikes. But there are aspects of uh, the opportunity which are completely outside of, of what Uber has, such as payments uh, and so on and so forth. So our view is that we'll go out and pursue what makes sense for the Middle East as and when we can leverage things that Uber has already. We'll, we'll work with them closely on it, but where not, we'll actually go and develop our own path and make it happen. Okay, awesome. Um, I wanted to ask you about Open. What do you like about Open? You know, Open, uh, it's just amazing what uh, the leaders and the founders of Open have managed to build. And for me, the, the things that stand out is one is, you know, every successful entrepreneurial ecosystem needs role models, right? And I think Open does a fairly good job in bringing out the role models and giving them an opportunity to connect with others in the ecosystem. So I think that's one big part that Open plays. There's of course a big support and mentorship network uh, that has been in place that is I'm sure helping people with different aspects of their, of their, um, of their journeys. Um, so in my mind, the role modeling and the support are, are the bigger aspects of uh, what Open brings. Thank you. And I think that leads me to the next question. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to all the aspiring entrepreneurs who, you know, as they come to our platform and I'm, I'm sure you're supporting a lot of them as well. What's the number one advice you give them and what should they be really looking for into this Kareem Uber story? And the advice that I generally uh, give entrepreneurs is Number one, you know, decide for yourself what you want to do. If you want to build a lifestyle business, there's nothing wrong with it. You can pick a niche opportunity, a small opportunity, and go after it and make it happen. Um, but if you really want to build something big, uh, then you have to find a big opportunity, right? And when you find that big opportunity, you need to be focused on solving problems. It's very easy sometimes for people that are sitting outside of the Silicon Valley, outside of the US, to look at, hey, this is what's happening in the US we can replicate this in our markets. But generally, when people have just replicated things that are happening outside in their markets, it's been difficult to compete with the parent companies when they come to your markets. So my advice generally is understand the problems in detail that your customers are facing, that your markets are facing, 
and make sure that you're solving those problems. You can get inspired by what's happening in the rest of the world, but don't be obsessed by what's happening in the rest of the world. Thank you, that's, that's awesome advice. So we're gonna go, go through a really quick, fun speed dating round. Okay. All right, I'm gonna ask you a few questions. Just let us know which one you like. Uh, cricket or football? Cricket. Okay. Uh, Pepsi or Coke? Coke. Burger or biryani? Biryani. <laughs> Every Karachi day. or Dubai? Karachi. Okay. Um, these are two uh, dramas. I don't know if you have seen one of them or not. Friends or Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones I haven't seen, but Friends, yes. <laughs> All right, then I'm, uh, I think I have two more is that can you tell us of a childhood, your favorite childhood memory? Favorite childhood memory? Yeah, yeah I think the, the memories have been around uh, doing well in school and then being sort of recognized by parents, right? I think those are the more notable memories that come to mind. My parents always twisted my ear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you weren't getting good grades. <laughs> I mean, if I didn't get good grades, I would have the same experience. But those are not the memories that I remember. Uh, no, no, absolutely. There is always pressure to be the top of, you know, That's on right. the top of your class. Um, can you tell us something that no one else knows about you? That no one knows about me. And I think the one... Uh, Thing that I, you know, you know, I grew up in in a very humble part of Karachi. You know, it's a place called Nanakwara, um, and uh, my parents, Alhamdulillah, have uh, had the had the sort of uh, idea to give me the right education, focus on education for me and my siblings. So, um, yeah, so it's just like looking at where I came from and Alhamdulillah where I am now. It's, uh, it's been a blessed uh, journey. Okay. Thank you so much, Mubarsha, for being with us today. Hopefully, this is the start of many more events to come. Inshallah. We are here after two years, and uh, hopefully, we'll have you next year and many more years to come. Thank Sounds you so good. much for Thank stopping. Thank you very much, Farhan. Pleasure. Thank you. Yeah?